Welcome to another exciting edition of the GCN Tech Clinic, where you submit your questions uh, to do with bikes, equipment, and maintenance, and then we do our best to answer them. You can submit your questions in the comments section down below and use the hashtag AskGCNTech. So Alex, without further ado, let's get into this week's first question. Okay, cool, right, first question up is from Raymond Dominic Ramila, who says, hi, Ollie and Alex. Recently, I tried to clean up my cycling shoes and I noticed that my cleats have moved slightly um, in the different positions when they set them up. And the bolts are not as tight as when they did set them up, so they're a little bit worried. Also, the shoes and cleats have been exposed to mud in some of their recent rides, uh, and it would appear something's covering the bolts up. Is this normal? And if not, what should I do to prevent my cleats from moving? Fairly simple for the first step of the process. Just pick out all of that loose mud. If you can't pick it out, wash it out, give it a little scrub, hose pipe, Stiff brush, no stress whatsoever. Mm. Then dry everything off, and it sounds like you might have to use a little bit of thread lock on the threads of the bolts holding your cleats on. So put them back in the correct position, bit of thread lock on the threads, bolt them up, and make sure you do them to the correct torque specification. And they shouldn't come loose. And they shouldn't come loose. It normally cures in like a few hours some thread lock. Huh? So yeah. That should sort you out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good advice. Uh, next question is from Eric C, who said he's upgrading his rear cassette from an 1128 to an 1130 Shimano Dura-Ace. Bit of a flex there in, in <laughs> <Yeah>. his comment. <laughs> um, he's asking, should I add links to the new chain when I install it? And if so, how many? Well, generally it's not good practice to just lengthen a chain by adding links to it. That's not what any you know, decent bike right. mechanic would recommend. The thing you should do is completely change your chain for, where, for, for the new length. And, when you fit a chain to a cassette, you should put your cassette on, on the wheel and fit it into the bike, and then follow the correct procedure for calculating the chain length. This is actually really easy to do, and we've got videos on that uh, that you can search for and, and watch that will guide you through it. There's sort of two or three different uh, methods. Personally, I'm a big fan of the Sheldon Brown method, um, but yeah, it's an easy thing to do, and that's what you should do. You can also keep your chain that you take off, because there's a point in the future where you might be riding somewhere flatter and you want to put on your Dura Ace uh, 1128 cassette back on your bike to have closer ratios, at which point then you've got a chain that's the right length to do that. Wow, yeah, I like that, simple, thanks. Mm. Um, next question in is from Alex Chast Chastney. He says, mm. why do pros use 42 millimeter, I'm assuming it means 420 millimeter base bars mm. on time trial bikes? Surely a pair of 38s or something would be much more aerodynamic. Yes, I'm actually inclined to completely agree with him. Of course, a narrow handlebar is gonna be more aerodynamic. The only reasons I can think that um, a pro rider doesn't have the narrow option is one of two reasons. Firstly, they simply don't like the narrow handlebar, and secondly, is that their equipment or component supplier can't actually supply them with a narrower handlebar than what's on their bike. <laughs> Next one. Uh, Mr. Matt Eusciechiera, Great job on that, I think. Nailed it. Yeah. Um, says, I want to change a frame for something carbon, aero, and fully integrated, like a Scott Fall or a Merida Reactor, both cool bikes. Uh, and he'd like to move an entire 105 group set from his current aluminium endurance bike. He's planning to use 105 levers with Avid's BB7 mechanical disc brakes that he has from a different project. But the question is, will mechanical braking cables work properly while being hidden Ooh. in the bike and stem, um, or a one-piece bar like you, you get on these integrated aero bikes? I would be quite mindful of this, actually. So the thing is, when you have fully integrated cable routing, it has to follow quite a sort of tight radius curve. It's quite a, a contoured route through the handlebars, the stem, and the frame. And I think you may well find that that routing isn't ideal for cable operated yes. disc brakes. It might mean that they're a little bit draggy and there's just a bit of resistance in the system. I think you might have to uh, do an upgrade. Yes. Hydraulic. I, I would suggest either saving up and waiting till you can afford to get some 105 with um, hydraulic levers and hydraulic brakes, as it will be worth the upgrade over mechanical uh, yeah. disc brakes, definitely. Or your other option is get a an aero frame set that's carbon that's still a rim brake frame set and yeah. just go and go with that still yeah. be a great bike and yeah, there's, you can there's just a quite a lot out there still. Yeah. yeah there's loads of cool rim brake aero bikes and i would recommend doing one of those two things rather than trying to sort of bodge mechanical disc brakes 
Yeah, well, there you go, simple. And next question in is from Matthew C. He says, hey guys, I'm planning to upgrade my group set from a mechanical Shimano Ultegra 11 speed to SRAM Force Access ETAP 12 speed. Can I ride on my smart trainer with an Ultegra 11 speed cassette? Unfortunately not. Um, you've, you've sort of listed the highlight in your, of the problem in your question there. So you've got 11 speed and then 12 speed. So the spacing on the cassette is very different. If you're I mean, if you're lucky, you might find one or two gears that work, but it's really not going to be ideal. And in terms of changing gear, you're really going to struggle. Mm. So I think what you're going to have to do is um, change the free hub and the cassette. I can't think, um, there's a certain name for it, isn't there, the free hub body? Yeah, so 12-speed cassettes, such as those used by SRAM uh, group sets, they use a different free hub body, sort of an overdrive free hub body. So you have to take off the standard Shimano one, put on a special SRAM one, and then you can fit your 13-speed cassette. 12 speed cassette onto your, your turbo trainer. Um, next question, shall I take this one? Go for it. Okay, it's from Who Nairimo. Who, yeah. Says, hi GCN, I, only ha I have only one cross country mountain bike. I rode, but I ride both on and off road and on gravel. Any tips you can share to be faster on tarmac? Yes, one simple tip. Actually, I could probably think of two. First one, invest in some lightweight cross-country tires. So think of something with quite a shallow tread depth, closely spaced together tread, and that'll roll a lot faster on the road. Invest in tubeless, that'll help you as well. And if you're finding you're struggling with the gearing on the road, you might want to choose a slightly larger chain ring. Yeah, and the other thing that you sometimes see some enduro sort of, well, adventure riders do, is they ride a, a sort of cross-country mountain bike. They actually, you've seen people in the past fit tri bars to them. If they're going yeah. to be doing an extensive uh, section of road riding, you can get your tri bars, clip on tri bars onto the handlebar, and you can just get into a more aerodynamic position, which makes a huge amount of difference to the speed you'll be able to go on the road. Just probably don't use tri bars off road. No, the guys at GMBN are going to hate us for telling people to put tri bars <laughs> on their mountain bike. Okay. <laughs> Um, next question is from Luis Moraes Sarmento. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, he goes, um, he's been learning a lot from tech videos and he's got a question on bearings. He, uh, he, he says, what sh lube should he be using on bottom bracket bearings? Can I use the same type of lube that I would use on my chain or do I use a different one? Um, how do you choose bearing lubes? Does it depend on the type of bearing? I would not recommend using chain lube in your bottom bracket bearings. No. Um, yes, it might spin fast on the stand. Yes, it might look like it's a great idea, as if you've got a super fancy pants surround bearing, but over time it'll wash out quite easily and it isn't going to offer the best protection for the bearings. So you're best off using um, a thicker grease, mm. a, a muck of bio grease. There's lots of different types of mm. I, I would say I'd agree with everything that Alex has said. However, uh, some people do run sewing machine oil <laughs> in their bottom brackets, right? And someone, one well, of the most famous examples of this, Vincenzo Nibali. Oh, yeah. And he, he won a lot of bike races, right? He did win and he's not races. done yet. Now, no. again, the reason is he's got a mechanic who's constantly cleaning out his bottom bracket and putting fresh sewing machine oil in every single day. And, you know, it does wash out and it's not long lasting at all. But if you are prepared to clean out your bottom bracket after every single ride and refresh your sewing machine oil, it will run very, very smoothly and, and very fast, like or, ceramic bearings. Or if you only want to do the job every few months or so, put a slightly thicker grease in and it'll offer a bit more corrosion protection, shall we say. Hmm. That is the last question for this week's GCN Tech Link. I hope you found that helpful. And if we didn't get to your question, sorry about that, comment it in the comment section down below and hopefully we'll get to it for next week. And um, well, that's it for now. Yes. See you in a bit. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. See ya.